Chicago Rovers. An exciting contest at United Park with five goals and no end of goal mouth action. Sligo opened the scoring after seven minutes. Some clever midfield passing culminating in John Russell's cross being finished by Dinny Corcoran for the strikers' first competitive goal for the bit of red. This was a game of missed opportunities for an attacking Sligo ensemble. With Steve Beatty's beautifully struck effort, one of many shots to go close, but just not quite close enough. And there were other problems too, as demonstrated when the hosts equalised after 16 minutes. Owen Heary won't have been pleased with the Sligo defence, a complaint that would become common for both managers throughout this game. Jason Marks' cross found Daryl Kavanagh unmarked in the penalty area, and he took full advantage of the space given to him. Sligo had the ball in the net again, when Michal Schlingerman could only clear as far as Raf Kataro. But Corcoran's challenge on the keeper resulted in a Drogheda free kick, as well as yellow card for the Sligo striker. Still, the attacks continued, with Beatty in particular proving to be a nuisance to Drogs. And Kevin Devaney played him in for another opportunity. Schlingerman got down quickly at his near post, and another effort was thwarted. It wouldn't be long, though, before Rovers did take the lead again. Russell's corner was headed home by Gavin Pearce, and it's not a bad way to celebrate your 300th appearance. But again, the marking non-existent. There was no let-up in the action in the second half. Devaney's goal-bound effort was cleared by a scrambling draw at a keeper into defence. Perhaps nervous times for the Sligo management. They surely should have been more comfortably in front by now. The nervousness would have increased as well when their defence again failed to clear properly. And this time Marx's effort from a difficult angle still managed to threaten the goal. Sligo were soon on the attack again and Dinny Corcoran could, and maybe should, have extended the visitors' lead. More last-ditch defending by the hosts. And just maybe all those missed chances from their opponents gave Johnny McDonald's side a lift, because in the 63rd minute, Drogheda were level. Kavanagh's clever chip put in Carl Brady through and he made no mistake from inside the box for 2-2 and game very much on. And they weren't done either. Six minutes later, Drogs were ahead for the first time. Sean Thornton's free kick headed home by Neil Yadalahi for what had for so long in this game looked an unlikely lead goal for the hosts. An unconventional header, but effective nonetheless. Sligo kept pressing as they had done throughout most of this match. The impressive beauty creating the chance for David Cawley, but Alan Byrne got back brilliantly to clear off the line. And the final act of this exciting game saw Drogs keeper Schlingerman almost carry the ball over his own goal line with a little help from Piers. Despite being on almost constant attack, Sligo still wait for a first win under Owen Heary. For Drogheda, it's a maximum six points. Yeah, it was important that we got the win after coming off last week and then obviously the defeat in the League Cup during the week. A uh, bit disappointed in the goals we gave away. We gave them away too easy. They didn't have to work too hard for them. But at half-time, you know, to come out in the second half and go in the second half and ultimately go in the game is fantastic. Good, absolutely good, because we created enough chances to win to win the game. Very disappointed with uh, the goals we conceded, especially two offset pieces. Um, but again, you know, we could have made a 3-1 and then... You know, they go down to the other end and go back to two all and probably change the, the game then as a whole. So a second consecutive victory for Drogheda United. Sligo Rovers just a single point so far from their two outings in the Premier Division this season. Uh, John, not many out there I think would have predicted uh, such a good start for Drogheda United to the season. But, but Johnny's done well in the first two matches, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Johnny's a very experienced manager and um, you know he's made a few uh, shrewd signings. Obviously, Torrington's come back from England. We all know about Derek Kavanagh. You know, super player, and I suppose um, you know at home, Drogheda will always be a difficult side. You know, I suppose looking at the highlights, Owen is obviously disappointed because yeah. he had opportunities as you know two one to go three one up, and looking at it, they probably missed a few other chances. So um, you know, but still, Drogheda is always a difficult spot to go to. Yeah, and Owen Harry won't be panicking just yet, but it makes their match against Derry City very, very important next weekend, doesn't it? Yeah, and I suppose look, we played Sligo last week and yeah. they were really good and. Um, 
you know, I think Owen has a lot of attacking options and, you know, obviously he was disappointed and missed a few chances, but I think the main thing for Sligo, they're, they're creating chances and, you know, maybe it's a good time to be playing uh, Derry at home. Yeah, so Alan, in your view, I mean, there were suggestions towards the end of last season that Sligo might be entering a, a dodgy period. I mean, it's obviously too early in the season to suggest that now, but uh, what do you think lies ahead for them? Yeah, of course, Peter. We're only two games into it, and yeah. obviously Owen is still finding his feet in terms of uh, the league table, but um, no, I wouldn't be too concerned. They played quite well, as John said, against uh, Cork City last week. I know he'll, feel, he'll be re bitterly disappointed to lose in Drada because no disrespect to Drada, but Sligo would be fancying their chances going up there. Um, but all credit to Drada, they, they performed well. I think the, the most disappointing thing for Owen and what will irk him more than anything else is the goals they gave away because defensively they were very solid against John's Cork City last week and the back four looked really, really poor now um, on Friday night against Drada. So I think that's what will disappoint them more than anything else. Yeah, but certainly that tie against Derry City at the weekend for Sligo Rovers is a mouth-watering fixture. In the meantime, uh, Trevor, you were taking a very close look at how Drawdy United went about their business on Friday and in particular the role that Daryl Kavanagh played in the in the fixture. Yeah, Daryl was exceptional. He, he was the difference really between the two teams. He enabled Drawdy to win the game. You see a cross comes in here, goes to the back post and you, you see Daryl here, we've highlighted him. He just pulls away, he pulls onto the blind side of Gavin Pearce and gets himself between the, the two centre halves. And it's a great little cross here by Marks and he gets a little, a little tap in. You can see here, he's just in between the Defenders, which always makes it awkward for defenders. And he gets a really, really easy finish, but it's due to his good movement. Here he links the play up, and this was a constant through the evening. He links it up, and that enables your midfielders to go, tr go forward. They're willing to go forward because they know it's been held up. It's, it's worth me making this run. And you see, he does it again. Here, he's willing to go in behind as well as come and link the game up. And he threatens that, and, and you'll see as it goes, he actually goes to go along, he comes in. And then Brady makes a fantastic run across. It's really, really poor defending. You know, Danny needs to stay with him. The centre halves don't get tight, but Daryl has adapted really, really quickly, and he plays a fantastic ball through. And it's a great finish. Here he's running behind, and it's really, really good play. You'll see he gets at, at Sligo here. It's fantastic play, twisting and turning inside the box. He's direct and he's positive. Here he wins a ball that he should never win, and again it enables the draw the midfielders to go forward, to break forward, and they've done that all through the night. And without that, there's no doubt they wouldn't have won the game because, as you've seen, the chances Sligo had. Yeah, I need to say, Johnny was very pleased and he was pleased with Daryl Cavanagh's performance. He was a relatively late addition and uh, Johnny decided to take a chance on him, but it seems to be a signing that is uh, working out for him. It is indeed. Looking at it the other night, he was exceptional. He was, he was unplayable. Yeah. It possibly suited Drogheda a little bit and Daryl that the way Sligo set up, they played a 4-4-1-1. So there was space between the back four and the midfield that he was able to find. Um, but they will. They'll need to keep him fit and keep him playing like that. Yeah, so a very good start to the season for Drogheda United and an excellent performance uh, by Daryl Kavanagh last weekend. OK, time to move on. And tomorrow, as you know, is St. Patrick's Day. So to gladden our Irish...